uh, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the Holy Spirit. And, and, and uh, don't get it confused here this morning. When I talk about developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's developing a relationship with God. That's Amen. right. Amen. Because we serve the triune God. In other words, the Trinity. Amen. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're one. Amen. And the great thing about it is we're going to learn here this morning, they're one with us. Amen. Because they live inside of us. Amen. And so I pray that your hearts are open. Amen. Here this morning. Because I believe God wants to speak to you. Are you ready to receive here this morning? Yes. Amen. John chapter 14, starting at verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you an, an, another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Amen. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live you also will live. Father, bless the reading of your word to our hearts, anoint it to our lives. Remove me to the side, Father. I pray that you would be able to use me here to minister, to preach, and to teach, Lord. I pray that the church would be edified and be built up, God. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to gather here in your presence. Remove all distractions, Lord, and take full control this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In verse 15, the word advocate in the Greek, because the New Testament was written in Greek language, in the Greek language, the word advocate in the Greek can also mean Helper. Amen. Helper. Amen. Helper. In the book of Genesis, God told Adam that he would that his wife Eve would be his helpmate. Are there any husbands grateful for their helpmates? Hallelujah. The word advocate means helper. The Holy Spirit is given to us as Christians to help us. Amen. How, many need, how many can use some help? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can use all the help I can get in this life. Because we live in a world where there's a, there's a lot of trials and tribulations that can take place. Well, the Holy Spirit is given to us to help us in this valley. To help us in this life. But how does the Holy Spirit help us? I want to give you a few ways the Holy Spirit helps us. Number one, he helps us in guiding us. The Holy Spirit helps in the area of providing guidance. There have been many times where I just didn't know what to do. But as I begin to pray... And get in the spirit. All of a sudden, I get a sense of direction. Oh, come on now. See, that is a that is the Holy Spirit helping me. Amen. Amen. And see, I, I feel sorry for, for the for the non-believer, the, the non-Christian who doesn't have this help. There's even some Christians that haven't tapped into the the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. They haven't tapped into the, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And because of this, sometimes they'll lack this area. They'll lack direction in their life. Wow, yeah, yeah. This is why they're always trying to look for answers on Facebook, oh, on the Mary Povich oh, show, oh, on, you know, Judge Judy. Come on, somebody. Huh? Dr. Phil. They're always trying to get answers and get direction from, from the world. But I'm here to let you know that the Holy Spirit is help, is here to help to guide us. But it's important to note that when the Holy Spirit guides or directs us, it's not always the easy way. If you're looking for a quick fix from the Holy Spirit, 
hear it, no, 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 no. you're probably not going to like his direction. Come on now. Come on now. You're probably not going to like his direction for your life. Because a lot of times the Holy Spirit doesn't give us that. He doesn't give us the quick fix. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world will. Drugs will. Alcohol will. That's a quick fix. Yeah, yeah. Come on. But when, but when you, when you, as a Christian, as a believer, whenever we find ourselves in a place where we don't know what to do, the answer is, is that we should pray. We should get. We should tap into the, the mind of God through the Spirit of God. And listen, as you do, as you approach the throne of God, as you begin to pray, all of a sudden you'll get the same sense of direction that I begin to get. And He might not always give you the easy way out or what you want to hear but we but he's always going to guide you right yeah, i don't know about you but i, I want to be guided right there's too many times where i was guided wrong there's too many times where i was misled come on somebody sometimes by well-intended people Sometimes by friends and family. Amen. Wow. But because they didn't have the Holy Spirit, they didn't have God in their lives, I was guided wrong. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you have the spirit of truth. Amen. Right, right. That will lead you into all truth. John chapter 16, verse 13 says, However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. My God. That's heavy right there. Amen. That means when you tap into his presence, when you tap into his guidance, on, he's going to tell you what's going to come. He, 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 he will forewarn you. Come on, somebody. Amen. In other words, he's going to help you not to get into some wrecks. Come on, come on now. Some life wrecks. Have you ever been in a life wreck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the Holy Spirit, I want you to know, is your inside man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hello. The Holy Spirit is your inside man. Inside man. To the meetings yeah. of the Trinity mm. about your life. Amen. Wow. Come on. You know, that, you know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they talk about you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They have meetings about oh, you. Come on. It's like any parents, right? Yeah. When we love our children. You know, and, and, and we, 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 when we love our children, our children are going through some rough times in life. We talk as parents. Yeah. How can we help little Johnny? How can we help little Susie? Yeah. Because we love them. We just don't want them just to, you know, just to, 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 to be misled or to, or to mess up in life. We want the best for them. Amen. And so we meet as parents. We talk as we get advice from other parents. Well, listen, it's the same thing for us even as adults. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have a meaning about yeah. you. They say, you know, look at our look at our son down there. It looks like he's looks like she's being misled. Oh, come on, somebody. Look at our daughter down there. It looks like she's going down the wrong way. What can we do to help her? What can we do to shape her life? What can we do to get her back on the right track? What can we do to get him back on the right track? They begin to have a meeting. Man, that's right. And listen, whenever you you tap into the mind of God through the Holy Spirit, through prayer, and, and you get in tune with the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of God, He is your inside man. He will tell you what the meeting was about. He'll tell you the direction that the Father wants you to go because the Spirit knows the mind of God. Ooh, come on now. Heavy. See, the Holy Spirit... Leads us into all truth. Amen. 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 It leads us into all truth. How many know we, we want to walk in truth? Amen. We spent too much time walking in lies. Come on now. Come on, come on. You know the lie that I walked in for a long time is that I was a gang member. Come on the lie that I walked in in a long time is I was born to sell drugs. Come on. Come on. I wanted to be the Scarface of Oak Cliff. Come on. Come on. That was my goal. And that was a lie of the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But therefore, I walked in that lie because I believe that was truth for my life. Yeah, yeah. I was going to be the biggest honcho. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. The biggest poncho. Amen. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> You'll get that later. Amen. Hey, God, no, amen. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Yeah. This is why I'm a pastor today. Yeah, this is why I'm answering the call today. Yeah. Because the truth was is that I wasn't called to be a hustler. I was called to be a pastor. I was called to be a preacher. I was called to be a man of God. I was called to be a husband of God, a father of God. That's what that's the truth of God. And you're called to be a woman of God. You're called to be 
be a leader in your house. You're called to be a leader in the kingdom of God. So therefore, walk in it. Tell your neighbor, walk it out. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Simmer down now. Come on. Walk it out now. Don't confuse the Holy Spirit with feelings. Oh, oh come on. That's good. Come on. I've seen too many well-intended Christians, babies in Christ, do this. Come on now. They confuse the Holy Spirit with their feelings. Wow. Oh, I got Break it down. Well, I'll, I, I, I feel oh, like he's the one. <laughs> I feel the spirit drawing me to her. That's <laughs> heavy right there. Be aware. Come on now. Be aware. Tell your neighbor, be aware. Be aware. <laughs> See, this is why it's always good to have leaders in your life. Yes. To have seasoned leaders in your life. That's right. To have a seasoned Christian leader in your life. Amen. This is why we're busy here in Victory Outreach Woo! raising up leaders. I said we're busy here in VOGP raising up leaders. Because we understand that, listen, to help babies in Christ and new believers, we know that the devil's going to pull this okie doke on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know he's going to try to get them to believe that their feelings is the Holy Spirit. Wow. Oh. I heard it once said like this, feelings sometimes make good guides, but they always make horrible masters. Wow. Oh, come on now. And it's always so important that you have leaders in your life that you can bounce bounce things off of. Yeah. Right. That you can bounce things off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you good. think about this? Yeah. This is what I've been praying about, and this is what this is what I feel. This is what I feel I've been impressed in my spirit. So, Pastor, what do you think about this? Come on now, yes. because remember, we've been through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a single man. I've been the come on. I, my wife has been a single woman in the house of God. Yeah. We done ministry for years. Uh, we, we, we've been in the, the, the thick of the battle with the enemy. We've been tempted. Come on, somebody. We've been on the mountaintop and we've been in the valley. We've gone through some things. We know a thing or two because we've been through a thing or two. And we ain't all state. Or state Farm, whichever one it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's good to have leaders in your life that you can bounce things off of. Man, it's good. Because they'll be able to identify, yeah, you know what? That that's that's the Holy Spirit right there. Yeah. That's the leading of God right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the Holy Spirit here is here to help us in guiding us. Yeah. Number two, the Holy Spirit comforts you with his presence. Yes. The Holy Spirit comforts you with his presence. When you feel all alone as a Christian, and you will, and you will, he reminds you you are not alone. That he is with you, in you, around you, forever. Amen. Huh? Isn't that what John, isn't that what he said? He said the spirit of truth. Yeah. He says in verse 8, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yeah. He said, I will come to you. I will make my abode with you. In other words, I will live with you and I will be with you. You, I, I will be in you as a, as a father, as I'm in the father and you are in me. I'm going to be in you. Yeah. When I was in prison, yeah, you got that right. You heard that right. Your pastor was in prison. Come on, come on, come on. I went from the prison house to the pulpits. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I was in prison, I was surrounded by many men, many evil and violent men. Prison can be a scary place to be, a place where you feel all alone and feel like no one has your back. Wow. Wow. But it was. In that dark, crowded, lonely place, on, that the Holy Spirit really made his presence known to me. As I walked the yard or the alleyway, I could feel his presence, yeah. hear his whisper, I'm here with you. Yeah. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I got your back. Yeah. 
See, no matter what a Christian may go through, even if you get locked up. Oh, my God. My God. Christians get locked up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah. uh, remember, we ain't perfect. No, no, no. no, no, no. Huh? <laughs> like they, they say, right? What does it say? Every sinner got a past. Amen. And every saint got a future. Come on. Something like that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes your past catches up to you. That's right. Yeah. As a saint. But no matter what, you got to know a Christian may go through, uh, go through, uh, he, no matter what a Christian may go through, he can go through it assured he will not be alone because the Holy Spirit is in him and is with him. Come on. All he has to do is tap into his presence and get to know the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Yeah. He is a gentleman. Yes. He loves you. He is waiting for you. He's waiting to have a relationship with you. Yeah. One pastor said, we are in the we are in the era of the Holy Spirit. Some people say it's not called the book of Acts. Oh, yeah. It's called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because yeah. really when you study the book of Acts, it's the Holy Spirit working. And yeah. still today, over 2,000 years later, the Holy Spirit is still doing his job. This is why some of you are here this morning, because when you woke up this morning, the Holy Spirit stirred you up and said, you got to get to the house of God. The Spirit of God all of a sudden touched you and wake you up, and all of a sudden you had praise in your mouth. You had a worship song in your heart. I want to let you know that's the Holy Spirit at work in your life. Come on. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit helps you pray when you don't know what to pray. For the second point, listen, if he was with if he was with me in prison, he'll be with you in the hospital. Come on now. If he's with me in prison, he'll be with you during during do, do, uh, in that tough and hard place. Yes, yes. No matter what, he'll be with you. And thirdly, the Holy Spirit helps you pray when you don't know what to pray. That's right. You don't know. Have you ever been in a place where you don't know what to pray? Yeah. Come on, yes. everybody. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. That's like every day for me. Come on. Come on now. That's like every day for me, man. If you're a person that prays daily, it's like, man, you pray for all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like you run out of stuff to pray. It's like God, I don't even know what to pray for anymore. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit will help you pray. Amen. Yeah. Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-six through twenty-seven. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, on, but now. the Spirit himself intercedes yes, for us yes, through yes. wordless groans. Come on, now. Wow. That's heavy right there. Heavy. Yeah, yeah. And then verse 27 says, and he who searches our hearts. Yes. See, he even searches your, he even knows what's in your heart. Wow. Yes. Knows the mind of the spirits. In other words, knows the mind of God. Yes. Because the spirit intercedes for God's people. The word intercedes means praise for you. Yes. Because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Yes. Oh, wow. Not accordance to your will. Come on, not accordance to the will of man, but in accordance to the will of God. Break it down, Pastor. Will of God. See, this scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer life. Now, before he can guide you into all truth, which was the first point, he must guide your prayers into all truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you understood that. Amen. Say it again, Pastor. But before God can do the point one that we talked about, before he can guide you into all truth, he must first guide your prayers into all truth. Amen. Wow. Your prayers must first come into alignment with the truth of God for your life. Amen. Then, then and only then are you in a position for you to walk in truth and in righteousness. Yeah. Wow. When God can get your prayers to line up, to what he wants for you in this world. Then he can position you 
for you to receive everything that he has for you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. He has something great for you. Amen. Because John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Yes. God has an abundant life for you. Right. He has an abundant life for you. Right. Huh? But you got to align yourself with the will of God. Come on, right. Pastor, come on. So how do you if, you, if you don't know what the will of God is, then you got to allow the Holy Spirit to help you pray. Because when the Holy Spirit helps you pray, it begins to pray for you. And it prays God's will for your life. Man. As humans, we struggle at times to know the will of God. Yes. Praying in the Spirit will help us discover that will and walk into it. You know, sometimes when you're a person that prays in the Spirit, when you pray in the Spirit, sometimes the, the Holy Spirit will just like reveal it to you, and then sometimes you'll just walk into it. Oh, come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know why? Because you, you're you praying in the Spirit. And praying in the Spirit, yes, it's speaking in tongues. And you're there, yada, with that, and it's praying in the Spirit. And, you know, and then sometimes, because you don't understand it, we don't understand it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Don't come up to me and ask me when you hear me speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Don't ask me, what do you say? Because I don't know. <laughs> come on, Pastor. <laughs> and it's okay because the Bible says you're not supposed to know. That's right. Amen. That's right. But the Spirit knows. Amen. That's right. And because of that, Listen, this is why sometimes we'll be walking in this life as Christians, Holy Ghost filled, and all of a sudden as we're walking in this life, we walk into a blessing. We walk into a breakthrough. Have you ever walked into a breakthrough? Have you ever walked into a blessing? Listen, when you're full of the Holy Spirit and you're praying in the Spirit, you will have more encounters of walking into a blessing. Why? Because you're praying in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, because you're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God is interceding for you and praying for you and sometimes you'll just walk into a breakthrough you'll just walk into a blessing why because you thought you weren't praying for it but in reality the spirit was praying for you come on now and this is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. This is why I encourage you, love on God, love on his presence, get into his presence. I guarantee you, you will get into less wrecks in your marriage, less wrecks in your family, less wrecks at your job. Less and I'm talking about problems and, and trials and tribulations. We're all going to go through trials, but even when you go through a trial because you're in the spirit, oh, that trial's not going to take you out. Yeah. 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 Learn to tap in. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, tap in. Amen. See, praying in the spirit, the wordless groans that Romans talks about, this is what we call praying in the spirit. See, I believe the more you pray in the spirit, the more help from the helper you will tap into. Amen. Come on, oh, come on, somebody. So real, right there, right there. The more help from the helper that you will tap into. See, this is why I encourage every Christian, get to know the Holy Spirit. Yes. Pray in the Spirit at all times. Yes. Paul said, Paul said, sing in the spirit, yeah. dance in the yeah. spirit, praise in the spirit, worship in the spirit, stay in the spirit. Don't drop your spiritual fruit. Come on, somebody. Woo. Come on yeah. now. Good. Number four, the Holy Spirit helps you, helps us by giving us his power. Yes. In Acts chapter one, verse eight, uh -oh. it says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit <laughs> comes on you. That's right. And you will receive power. That word power in the Greek is dunamis. Dunamis. Right. Is where we get our word dynamite. That tells you how much power there is in the Holy Spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This power is given to us as Christians not to go on a power trip. <laughs> I'm the strongest man alive. This power is given to us as Christians to be a witness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, I mean, uh, turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's look at it. I wasn't going to turn to it, but let's turn to it real quick. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, so I can show you. 
Are you getting anything this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. You receive this power to be a witness. Amen. The word witness in the Greek means martyr. Mm. Martyr is somebody who dies for Christ or for a cause. In, the wow. Christi in Christianity, is for Christ. Somebody who dies for Christ. Amen, amen. To die. In other words, listen. There's so many people that say, I'll die for you, Jesus. Uh, I say to them, he doesn't want you to die for you. He doesn't want you to die for him. He already did that for you. Amen. He wants us to live for him. Amen. But we do what we what we do gotta die to is we gotta die to ourselves. Yes. We gotta die to ourselves because if we don't die to ourselves, we'll never be a witness. We'll never listen. Last night I, we went to the streets with a couple of guys. Amen. But my flesh was saying, "No, don't go to the streets. Watch Netflix." Oh. 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 Can I be real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Because I like watching documentaries. Come on. <laughs> I said, no, i got to die to myself. Yes. Come on now. Yes. To be a witness. Come on. Yes. To be a witness. Yes. Come on, Come on somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Listen, and I know it ain't easy because the flesh is a monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? And I, and I got a big flesh. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I mean, my flesh is bigger than yours, amen. I'm just... Come on, I got a lot of flesh, amen. Huh? I got to put this under subjection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? But this is why you need power. You need the power of God to be able to die to yourself. This is why God has given us the Holy Spirit to come upon us, to come upon us with power. To say you're not going to do what you want to do, but you're going to surrender your life to me. You're going to be a witness unto me. You're going to live for me. You're going to honor me. That's what God has been doing in my life for now 20 years. It wasn't none of myself. It's because of the power of God. It's not easy to die to self. Come on now. That's why you need the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. Every time I step out to preach, every time I step out to witness, every time I step out to disciple, to pray for somebody, to teach, his power comes upon me. I feel his power here this morning as I preach the gospel. It's a very real power that you can feel even though we don't look for the feeling because we know it's by faith. But you can't ignore this power because it's so real. Do you understand what I'm saying? Has anybody in this place ever felt the power of the Holy Ghost come upon your life when you're praying for your loved one, when you're praying and you're sitting in your prayer closet, when you're laying hands on somebody, when you're evangelizing to somebody? I want you to know it's the power of God that comes upon your life. Don't take the glory. Give the glory to God. We need the power of God. Yes. It's the power, it's the power of God that pushes back the darkness. Like the song that we sing, pushing back the darkness. Because it's the Holy Spirit's power pushing back the darkness. There's going to be a day. There's going to be a day where the Holy Spirit's going to be taken. You know when that is? Is when the rapture takes place. Thessalonians talks about it. He's saying, he who holds the enemy back will hold him back no longer. Oh, wow. And right after that, it says, it talks about the rapture. You know why? He's not going to hold back. There's not going to be nothing holding back. When the rapture hits and God takes the church. Come on. Huh? If it's on a Sunday, all you're going to hear is. Oh, come on. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Micra. You can see my clothes on the floor. <laughs> and when God takes the church, and then many are going to be gone, but there's some that are going to be looking around. Some that are still tied to the world. Some that still have worldly ties. They haven't let go. You're going to look around like, where did everybody go? Wow. And let me tell you something. 
When the church is taken, where's the Holy Spirit? Right now. Inside of us. Inside of us. So when the church is taken, the Holy Spirit's gone too. Wow. And the Bible says there will be nothing holding back the forces of the Antichrist. Wow. This is why there's going to be a seven-year tribulation Ooh, that we won't go through. Don't let no other, no, don't let no other preacher and teacher tell you that we're going to go through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Because we will be in heaven. Yeah. We will be with Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. That's good news. Yeah. But it's the Holy Spirit's power. Come on, man. We, we, we can't be those people that the Bible talks about. In the last days, people are going to uh, 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 bring up pe preachers that, that just tell them what their tickling ear wants to hear. Oh, come on, Pastor. Oh, it's heavy. My God. I don't know about you, but I, I needed a word. I need the Holy Spirit to convict me of my sin. I, I need that because, listen, we got to stay right with God. Conviction is needed so that we can live right, so that we can live right with God and honor God with our lives. We need to feel conviction in our life. And the Holy Spirit, that's the job of the Holy Spirit, to bring conviction. And the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit don't need a preacher to do that. The Holy Spirit will do it by himself. He'll use the word. He'll use your dog. He'll use your baby. He'll use... Come on. Huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> to bring conviction. Yeah. Wow. We need conviction. Good man. We need to feel convicted. Yeah. Listen, I'm afraid if I don't feel convicted. Yeah. Wow. I, I fear of not feeling conviction. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I want to feel convicted too, when I don't pray. I need it. I want to feel convicted when I don't read the Bible. I want to feel convicted if I miss church. I want to feel convicted if I'm tempted. Because those are the warning signs. Those are the flashing. It's like, it's like if your car needed oil, wouldn't you want it to talk to you? Wouldn't you want it to, t to turn a light to turn on or, or some noise to start making? Come on, somebody. It's like my daughter's car. She has a clunker, man. <laughs> I said, honey, have you changed the oil? She said, yeah, the mint home changed it, but it's still clunking. <laughs> oh, come on, Beth. I know that thing's going to go out, but at least it's warning us. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's good, Pastor. Come on. Sometimes that's what the Holy Spirit does. He warns us. Wow, come on. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be hanging around over there. Wow. You shouldn't be with those people. Yeah. You shouldn't be talking like that. You shouldn't be watching that. Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you're not even in service. Wow. But the Holy Spirit is doing his job. Because he's in you. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the piano prayer comes up. There's a lot more the Holy Spirit helps you in. And I hope to, I hope to share more with you. But I want to close with these two things. Number one, the only way the Holy Spirit will help you is if you obey. Woo! That's good. Is if you obey. Look at John 14, verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commands. The very next verse. Look at it. Verse 16. And then, and, and, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. The only way the Holy Spirit's going to help you is if you obey. You got to obey God. Obey Jesus' commands. Obey the, the, the Bible. Obey the Holy Spirit when He prompts you. And the second and the last thing about the Holy Spirit that I want to tell you today is that it's found in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Everybody. All. On all people. On all people. On all of you. All of you. On all of you. On all of you. On all of you. He says he's going to pour out his spirit on all of you. Oh, that's good news. Amen. That's good news. I'm here to tell you.
tell you that the Holy Spirit is for everybody. Everybody. Amen. It's for everybody. Amen. Don't let no lying preacher, teacher tell you there is no Holy Spirit. Amen. But the Holy Spirit ain't God. Hmm. Nope. In these last days, God has poured out His Spirit on all people. Amen. To know him and to experience him. Right. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. Right. We all can receive the help that I talked to you about this morning. Yeah. It is for you. It's not just for pastor. It's not just for the leaders. It is for all of you. It's for all of us. We can tap into the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help us pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit can intercede for us and give us power. That dunamis power to overcome the temptations of the world. The Holy Spirit will bring conviction upon our lives so that we can live right for God's honor and glory. The Holy Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, upon all people. And that's not it. It says in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, your sons, and your daughters. Both men and women are the women of God in the house. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. This scripture left nobody else. It left nobody else. But you have access to the Holy Spirit. I want you to stand to your feet here this morning. And if you want.